We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to continue painting this Death Guard Plague Marine. And we're going to do a really dark brass look on the trim of the armor. As always, if you have a suggestion for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave it down below in the comments. So we want this to be a really dark brown metallic, so we're going to start with the darkest brown metallic, and that is going to be Warplock Bronze. We're going to mix it with a little bit of Lamian Medium, and we're going to do that with all of our colors, except for the shades and other weathering elements that we use. And we're just going to paint this all over the armor trim. The areas that I'm going to focus it on are going to be the shoulder pads. There's also a little bit of armor trim around the neck and around this large belt. There are some areas on the legs and the bracers that could be armor trim. However, I'm choosing to keep those green. I just want this really thick edge to be in this dark brass color. I'm also going to be painting this dark bronze color over all of these fly emblems that are on the armor and there's quite a few of them. There's one on the knee, there's uh, one on the backpack, there's several on the armor. I'm just going to hit all of these with that warp lock bronze color as well. Once the warp lock bronze has been applied, my next color is going to be Rune Lord Brass. And I'm going to paint this on the top points of all the metal trim areas. I'm really focusing it on the areas where the light's going to be hitting it the most. This is another really dark brown metallic color and I'm going to paint it over about 80% of the Warplock Bronze. Again, I'm keeping this metal really dark so I'm not going to be using that many layers of highlight. Also, if I need to do a couple layers to really build up this Rune Lord Brass color, that's okay. I'm just making sure that I use a very thin paint and I'm not putting it on too thick anywhere and I'm slowly building up the color. For me, this is a really subtle transition, so it's not requiring a ton of blending for me. However, if your paints happen to be a little bit more pigmented than the batch that I got, and you're having a really stark contrast between the two colors, you can always go back with one of your previous colors and go back with that Warplock Bronze and blend it into the Rune Lord Brass and make that transition a lot smoother. Our next color is going to be Psychorax Bronze. And I'm painting this in the same areas. I'm just painting slightly less of the model. I'm going to put this over probably about 50% of the Rune Lord Brass color. And again, I'm concentrating it in the areas that would be hit by the most light. However, I'm also going to start picking out the edges of the armor in places where there are edges, especially on the trim of the shoulder pad and you'll see that more with our next highlight. Our last highlight is going to be with the color Liberator Gold and I'm going to use this as a line highlight on the very edges of the armor just like I was starting to do with my Psychorax Bronze. I'm doing this to really pick out those edges and make them stand out more, more than build up the brightness in any particular area. Because I want this bronze to be so dark but at the same time, I don't want to lose or make any of the armored elements fade into the background. So doing this line highlight on the edges of the armor is going to make sure that those edges still stand out even though this color is very dark. Now that we have the bronze on there, we're going to weather it up a bit. We're going to start by using the shade Raiklin Flesh Shade as well as a little bit of Athonian Camo Shade. And I'm putting both of these on at the same time so they kind of blend together on the model. I'm not mixing the paint together before I apply it. I'm just using them by themselves at the same time so that while they're still wet, they're interacting. And with the Raiklin Flesh Shade, I'm going to be putting this in the shadows. It's going to kind of warm up the shadows a little bit without really brightening it too much. And the Athonian Camo Shade, I'm going to be applying on the edges of the armor where it transitions into the green just to make that shadow a little bit darker. I don't need to apply this over all of the metal, it's just going in those specific areas. 
The last step is going to be to take a little bit of Nihilac Oxide. And I'm just going to dab this on a few areas. I don't want to go too heavy with it and I don't want to put it everywhere because too much of it is really going to overwhelm the model. But I'm going to dab it on a few areas of this bronze so it seems like it's oxidized a little bit. This is really thick paint. It really dulls down any shine. And so I'm just going to put a little bit on, clean off my brush and spread it around. And after that Nihilac Oxide has dried, the bronze trim on this model is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to start painting this large belt area in the mini Wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a 7 day free trial, and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini Wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy Wargaming!